Welcome everybody, I'm Riccardo Tonini, and this webinar is about disinfection. Disinfection of our root canal systems, and uh, disinfection, in my opinion, represents our daily challenge in terms of uh, success, because it's a continuous challenge, because we, if we don't respect disinfection during our root canal treatment, the risk is only failure, failure over the time. So, during this webinar, we will discover some update about literature, we will discover together the clinical protocols, and we will find new materials and products available on the market that can really change the game. If we want to understand how much important is cleaning in endodontics, it's enough to open a journal, like an International Journal of Endodontics, and when we discover that a complete issue is dedicated to irrigation, finally, we can understand that A, the literature is concerned about this problem. And so, what about cleaning? Cleaning is not represented by only bubbles are coming out from our pulp chamber. And what about endodontic irrigants? They have three major ob objectives, by the way, chemical, biological, and mechanical. Mechanical objectives include to rinse out the breeze, lubricate the canal. The chemical objectives instead include the soften and, the, and dissolve organic and inorganic tissues to prevent the formation of the smear layer during our shaping procedures. And we want absolutely to dissolve the smear layers when it, it has formed. And finally, we have a biological objective. They are related and connected to an aseptic and non-toxic effect such as efficacy against anaerobic facultative microorganism. So, biological effect is basically try to destroy all the bacteria. If we take a look to this X-ray, we can understand that from one side, right side, we are successful, and instead from the left side, we have a failure. And the difference between the two cases is represented by bacteria. We fight against bacteria. Bacteria represents our major problem in during our root canal treatment. Normally, the success rate of a root canal therapy is uh, in the conventionally between 70 and 95 percent. The presence of persistent infection is the main reason for the failure of an, our endodontic treatment. And so, we are looking for success. So, we are looking for success. Success in our daily practice, a long-term success, and success is not only one shot, it's not represented by one uh, root canal treatment, it's a continuous uh, way, a growing way in our daily practice. If we take a look at our clinical cases, we can understand that with the proper shaping, cleaning, and filling, finally you can be successful in simple cases and in complicated cases, why not? like a deep curvature with a ledge. And when we bypass the ledge, we can establish finally again the glide path. And finally, we can perform uh, cleaning and shaping and filling until the working length. Okay, when we talk about endodontics and endodontic treatment, we have many steps that are, they are anesthesia, access cavity opening, shaping, cleaning, filling, and why not, resto. All together, they represent a root canal treatment. But uh, we can appreciate the evolution of these different phases if we analyze the situation in a different way. On the first line, we can consider the time, the time that usually we can spend if we don't use shaping rotary files. It means files made in nickel titanium. And so the timeline is extremely long. Thanks to the evolution, thanks to the new files and the new technological things, we squeezed a lot of the time required for shaping. And so our root canal therapy is basically shorter. But why not thinking about something else? Why don't think about reducing again the timing if we can perform and if we can increase the irrigants 
action inside our canals. It means that maybe we can think about in reducing time of a clinical session, reducing the time dedicated of cleaning without absolutely affecting the results, the final results. So our intent for the future is reduce the time of operative time, because time is also a cost, without affecting the outcome. Reducing the time of shaping is, a, is already done. The reducing time of uh, cleaning on the way, and why not feeling too? So a root canal treatment is composed by shaping, cleaning, and filling. How much are important shaping and filling in order to reduce our enemy bacteria? If we check the literature, we can understand that absolutely. Filling is not so important for in order to reduce the amount of bacteria inside the canals. And if we consider also uh, filling, we have to understand that the sealers also, even if they have an antibacterial action, when, once they are set, we lose at, at all the power of antibacterial efficacy. So it means that obturation, we have to consider obturation only a, a, a procedure for fixing and maintaining the ceiling in order to prevent the secondary infection. And what about shipping? Can we consider shipping important for uh, reducing the amount of bacteria? Absolutely no, because also here the literature can explain us that shipping can not only reduce and remove a few amount of bacteria, that over shipping of the canals is not suggested in vivo, in vitro, yes, but in vivo, no. And that we have to consider one thing, that we can also extrude and pack all the uh, smear layer with bacteria in the anatomy, in the hollowed anatomy, in the hollow anatomy, in the anatomy that we cannot touch at all with our instruments. And in the anatomies like this, this is uh, coming from the uh, researches of Marco Versiani, one of the most important uh, researchers in terms of anatomy and complexity of the anatomy. How can we pretend so in these anatomies to make a complete shaping, a complete shaping, and we cannot pretend to touch with our files an anatomy like that. The only thing that we can imagine and we can expect, it, we can only think about is try to make a shape with our rotary files and push our irrigants in touch with the anatomies, deep anatomies like isthmus, lateral canals, complexity, etc., and try to fix the situation in this way. If we check a beautiful book, that is Bettina Barzlani book, we can understand that absolutely, in green, we have the original anatomy. When we shape, we print the shape of in red. And what about this kind of anatomies? The last anatomies on the right, on these anatomies, we cannot do nothing because in the middle between two canals, we have a lot of pap tissue or maybe lot many bacteria that we cannot touch with the shaping. Root canal is an enclosed complex space with intricate configuration and apical constriction. It is so important to mention here that more than 35% of the root canal surface is left untouched by conventional instrumentation as displayed here with a round cross section, the denting particles that are cut from our shipping action, they are only carried coronally in few parts, and the most part of them are pushed inside the anatomies. So the risk of shipping is only pushing many, many debris inside anatomies like isthmus, with isthmus, and so absolutely not efficient. And also here the literature can explain us that shipping cannot reduce the amount of bacteria or that why not can also
push bacteria over the apex. And we know that if we push debris and bacteria over the apex, in the next days, our patients will be not so happy because the post-operative pain will be huge. And so we cannot trust on obturation. We cannot trust on shaping and files because they are not designed for this purpose. Our root canal treatment in order to reach success so is represented by shaping, cleaning and filling. But cleaning is the most important part of our procedure in order to reduce the bacteria that they are the cause of our in success. So if we want to be successful, we, are, we have to clean in a proper way. Let's try to discover how to do this. First of all, we have to change our mind. If we don't clean in the deepest part of the root canal anatomies, we will never be able to be successful. We have to change our mind, think different, think smaller, but smaller and smaller, because we have to understand that inside dentinal tibis, we have a lot of bacteria and we have to put in touch our irrigants with these bacteria. In about penetration of bacteria and irrigants, we know that bacteria can penetrate for 250 or 300 microns, but instead our irrigants can only penetrate for 150 microns, so basically the half. We have to try to do our best because the only way that we have to be successful is try to put remember, our irrigants in touch with the bacteria, so in touch with the problem. If we are looking for a clinical protocol, a rinsing protocol, and if we are looking for it from the literature, I can only tell you welcome in the jungle, because it's impossible to follow all the protocols that are suggested. And basically, a clinical, a real protocol is not written nowadays. Why? Because they missed the point, and we will discover together this point. About cleaning, the first question for you is, what do you think? Do you really have a technique? Do you know exactly the sequence of irrigants that you have to use? Do you know how to employ them? And do you know all about the chemistry of your uh, irrigants? I'm sure not so much. So let's follow this webinar completely and you will understand, first of all, your problems and after the answers. About the problems in terms of disinfection, we have to consider that the most, our enemies for disinfections, for obtaining a good disinfection, are bacteria, anatomies, and substrate that we have to treat. It means dentin. They are the most important three factors that you have to consider when, while we are cleaning. About bacteria, if we read with this beautiful research from Apasalo about bacteria, we can understand that, that there are many situations and clinical uh, situations that can help the bacteria in growing and others that instead can fight against them. In red, you can see all the um, enemies, the weapons that we have in our hands in order to fight against them, like instrumentation, chemical of our irrigations, irrigants by themselves, and instrumentation, why not? But instead, the kind of bacteria, the ecological point of view, the age of the infection, the time of uh, uh, these bacteria from uh, how much time they are inside the canals can clearly create a big problem for us. It means that it will be more difficult to eradicate the bacteria from the root canal system. Again, from the book from Bettina Basdrani, we can understand from these beautiful uh, pictures that bacteria, they are, they are not present inside the root canal system as in planktonic way, but they are really organized and they are trying to put together in order to form the biofilm. And once they create the biofilm, biofilm is more difficult to eradicate because we have a lot of bacteria that are protected from a barrier a protein barrier. And think about our irrigants, when they get in touch with the biofilm, they will find something more to digest. It means that it will be required more time. 
more and more time because there are more problems to digest. What about anatomy, our second enemy? If we consider anatomy, we can only understand from our X-ray that anatomy is represented in this way. Try to, to understand from this anatomy of a lower molar, from the distal root of uh, this uh, lower molar, that usually from this two bidimensional X-ray we can see this shape. But instead, the real anatomy that is present in a distal root canal is like is represented on the right. So we have so many kinds of anatomies and can we understand which one is in front of us? It's impossible. So we have to treat the root canal system thinking about the worst situation, the worst condition. And anatomy is another enemy. Again, it's an important enemy. Why? Because when we shape from red to green our root canal system, we can pack in the middle, in the isthmus, a lot of materials. And after filling in gold, we can understand that we left a lot of remnants in the middle of the canals. From the literature, again, if we read the many of beautiful articles written from Ricucci, we can understand that anatomy is in the deepest part, it is, can represent, is represented by really variable situation, like lateral canals. And when we treat the main canal, we left a lot of organic tissue inside the lateral canals. And when we treat the main canal, we leave a lot of remnants inside the lateral canals. It means that absolutely our root canal system has been partially and completed, completed. We missed a lot of part of real anatomies. But in any case, at the end, we can be successful or we can, be, we can fail if this left parts can grow and grow and can represent a re secondary infection of the root canal system. Okay, we discussed about bacteria, we discussed about anatomy, and the third challenge is represented by dentin. The structure of dentin is a porous configuration with dentin and tubules that hollow bacteria invasion and adherence, making dentin disinfection a real challenging step. The most difficult thing to, uh, that we have to understand is that the risk of the buffering effect is uh, really high. It means that after that we place it inside our root canal system, hypochlorite or the DTA, we have to consider that after a few seconds they did their action, they interact with dentin. It means that they are no more active inside our canals. It means that we have to refresh men them many times in a continuous way, way if possible. Now we have to discuss about irrigants and we understood that maybe we have not a technique. We understood which are our enemies. Now we have to talk about irrigants and if we are thinking about a needle irrigants we usually we need and we ask from manufacturing companies any irrigants that can answer to all the listed requests. But at the end, we will discover that we, it's impossible because only one irrigant cannot answer to all these requests. It means that with only one irrigant, we cannot do everything. We need one, uh, more than one. My selection, based on the literature for sure, is based from, on two main irrigants. They are hypochlorite and EDTA. Sodium hypochlorite has a lot of benefits. It's able to dissolve the organic part of dentin that is represented by collagen. And on the market, we can find an hypochlorite that is in between, in terms of concentration, between 0.5 and 6%. My suggestion is to use the 5.5% of uh, hypochlorite or the 6% of hypochlorite. And the second suggestion is to change it many times because we have to refresh it many times and we will discover, we will understand later why. And if we follow the common literature or the, all the books, we can understand that the time in terms of application of osadiochloride, the suggested time, is 
at least 30 minutes. Hypochlorite is the king of the disinfection, the king of irrigants. The problem is that he has, is a potent, is a powerful oxidizer, and if accidentally extruded over the apex, can create a real big problem, an accident from hypochlorite. And so we have to avoid, we have to control him, but we have to use him, hypochlorite as much powerful as possible. In terms of temperature, we also hear, we have seen, we, have, we read many, many articles about uh, increasing the temperature of hypochlorite. But uh, sorry, when I understood that the volume of hypochlorite that we can introduce inside the canal is uh, so small, around 50 microliters, I understood also here from uh, this beautiful article that after a few seconds, uh, this hypochlorite come back at body temperature. It means that it is unuseful to preheat hypochlorite outside the Rucanan system. It's better if we can heat it inside the Rucanan system in cells. So if we went during our action. An example, like ultrasonic tips, they can, during their action, they can increase the temperature of hypochlorite directly inside the Rucanan system, not outside. And what about EDTA. EDTA is a real beautiful um, coolant agent. The EDTA can uh, connect, can bond to the calcium ions, but cannot remove itself the smear layer. Here we have to remember that we have to activate the EDTA itself in order to remove better all the smear layer. EDTA can create, can, uh, can uh, dissolve only a few microns of dentin and can act only against the, the reaction is more on um, the inorganic part of, uh, so the hard part of dentin. But also here we have to remember that after a few seconds the power of EDTA is completely reduced. So it's completely buffered from the dentin and the dentin represents a real huge enemies that sometimes we do not consider because we love to leave our irrigants in place, thinking that they are acting, but sorry, we are wrong. Okay, we understood the irrigants, the most important irrigants. Now we have to use them in a proper way. We have to understand how to use them in a repeatable way. First of all, irrigation, is, we have the technique, we have two techniques of extrusion of irrigants, positive, and negative techniques. Negative techniques, uh, if you remember well, is represented by uh, Endovac. Honestly, I, I stop in use the, this device because it's not so predictable and cost benefits are really uh, separate. We have a lot of cost in using this device. In terms of positive disinfection, we have to focus our attention on three main things. The best positive disinfection that we can produce is the delivering through our uh, needles, through our syringes of irrigants. And it's an action, so it's an activation also. And after we have other two main kind of a repeatable activation and feasible kind of activation, they are represented by sonic and ultrasonic. Okay, the common way of introducing our irrigants inside the Rucanal system is represented by syringe and needles. What about syringe and needles? I suggest you to use syringe in different colors because you have to distinguish the irrigants. So if you have on the tray two similar irrigants of the same color, it's good to understand which one you have to use. And after, what about needles? For sure, we have to think about safety. And so, Use, if you have not reference on your needle, use a rubber stop and use lateral side dent in terms of extrusion. Irrigants, the, the size of the knee of the, the syringe, I suggest to use a three and five LM ml of uh, this uh, syringe, no more. When we introduce a needle connected with syringe, we have to think to many factors. The flux, it means that we have to introduce our irrigants 
in flushing in with the power of the positive action and we have to follow the fluid dynamics theory. theory. The chemical effect of our irrigants, they can be more active or less active, it depends on their composition. The mechanical effect, it means that if we activate our irrigants or not, and why not? We have to think first of all about safety. We have to consider everything, every time. For, for sure, it's better if we consider also here the suggestions that are coming from the American Association of Endodontics in terms of volume, we have to introduce as much volume as possible. Okay, but also here is a general suggestion because we cannot calculate, we cannot use so much one liter of hypochlorite in order to clean our canals. No, we have to use the right volume and we will discuss about volume later. In terms of fluid dynamics, we have to understand that uh, all the root canal system is uh, not closed system, but is a system with a curvature, with a, a, resistant, the, a resistance that is opposed and uh, is uh, created from the periodontal ligament. And so we can rinse and we can only expect that if we don't go farther to the resistance of periodontal ligament and the bone, we can expect that our ligands come out from the pulp chamber. And here, if we follow the literature, we can understand the suggestions in terms of irrigant irrigation is stay three millimeters shorter from the working length, from the apex, use needles that are around 27 or 30 G in terms of uh, diameter, and the root canal preparation usually would be around 30 and 45. If we see and if we follow the suggestions that are coming from Botsukis, we can understand that also here the best needle that is suggested is the needle with a lateral vent extrusion and with the close end because we want to avoid any over extrusion of liquid, maybe with the risk of extrusion over the apex. From Versiani, we know that here we have our anatomies. And how can we introduce our irrigants, our needle, in the deepest part of the root canal system? Our intent is to introduce the needle inside the root canal system as deepest as possible. It means at three millimeters from the apex. Okay, how can we do it here in this really deep curvature? It's impossible. For shaping this curvature, we jumped from manual shaping with a steel and steel files to rotary files with nickel titanium. It means that we had a great evolution in terms of shaping, but the same evolution we hadn't in the same evolution in terms of cleaning. We are fixed. We are fixed on this shape made in steel and steel. It means that during the years, following the, also the manufacturing process, we developed a lot of beautiful shapes, but we didn't work a lot about material. It basically, we missed the point, because the material is the key of success. If we want to rinse in the deepest part of a root canal system, even if the curvature is really deep, we have to think about polymer. What happened usually when we try to introduce a metal needle inside a, a curvature. We have this result. It means that we are able to rinse and introduce it only in the first part of the anatomical route. It means cor coronal and medium part. But we can miss the apical part. It means that we can miss the most important part of our root canal system. Instead, if we try to think different, if we try to use like this new beautiful device that is Reflex, uh, that is made in polymer, finally we can understand that maybe we can put the irrigant inside the deepest part of the Rucana system, because this tip is 30 G in terms of diameter. We have a 4% of conicity, and why conical? Because in this way we can have a more uh, flux, laminar flux on the walls. It means that we have a more share stress on the walls and that it means that the power of our irrigants is enhanced. It means that the power of irrigants is enhanced because we have a laminar flux that is 
with a higher velocity, our speed, and for sure under control. From the tip, we have a double extrusion of liquid, a close-end tip, so safety first, and we have a mark on the neck about the depth of the introduction of the needle inside the Rucana system. If we try to do a test on an extracted tooth, tooth using different kind of needle, we can understand exactly what I mean. Here I'm using a, a nickel titanium needle. I'm not able to go deeper than half of the canon. The same from the stainless steel. The same for the ultradent, the best needle maybe on the market. Take a look here. With the polymer, with the e-reflex, we can go deeper and deeper. And we can rinse close to the apex in a safe way without a risk of extrusion because we have to rinse, remember, drop by drop. And we have to move up and down of two, three millimeters in order to really uh, be as, as powerful as possible. And also here, if we decide to use this needle, this polymer needle since the beginning, it means that is, we have to consider it not like an additional tip, but as a, the main tip, but in main needle that we have to use for cleaning our Lucanal system since the beginning. So, be, why we are doing a retreatment, why we are shaping, we can use it since the beginning. This is the most important topic. So after that we pre-shaped, we established a glide path, we can take the working length, we can shape definitely our canals, and in the meantime, every time we can use e reflex Because this tip can go deeper and deeper following the shaping. So stay maybe one or two millimeters shorter from the working length in the beginning, but don't hesitate you have to go deeper because the close end and the lateral dent can help you in, uh, to avoid any kind of extrusion. Take a look also here to a big benefit that I had using this dip. It's completely transparent. So, disappears inside the canal. From this dip we have efficacy, safety, visibility. In my opinion, compared to the conventional needles, we can finally say that uh, we are living a real evolution in terms of cleaning. So finally, maybe we have not to overshape our canals, but we can respect the original anatomy because finally we can introduce in the deepest part of the anatomy and the root canal system this kind of needle. So try it and let me know. Now we understood that we have, we have to use a kind of syringe. We have to use a, a, absolutely a kind of needle. We understood everything, but now we need some technique. The easy technique in order to use our syringe is the push-pull technique. The push-pull technique is extrude the liquid, suck and, and clean the liquid again inside the, the syringe, and in this way you can understand if you have some in isthmus, some joined canal, and is something in also for a good diagnosis. But not only for diagnosis, also for efficacy, because we have to remember that the best way for introducing, before introducing a new, uh, uh, new uh, irrigant is in removing the old one. In this way, the new irrigant will be absolutely powerful. The other two techniques for enhancing the action of our irrigants is the use of sonic or ultrasonic uh, instruments. Sonic is only agitation, sorry, and there is a really low powerful agitation. So if we have to choose one kind of uh, activation, choose ultrasonic. And you can use your device, dedicated device. The most important thing is use them because they are really important and the literature also here can give us a good answer in terms of their use the powerful is higher and higher. During uh, ultrasonic activation, we can produce cavitation and we can modify also the sonochemistry of, with the sonochemistry, we can modify the chemistry of our ligands, like hypochlorite. Cavitation is a, a really powerful way for detaching the breeze and uh, for removing a smear layer or uh, uh, biofilm from the walls. And 
while we are working with these metal tips, we can increase the temperature and we can so modify the hypochlorite composition. In, in which way? Because chlorine is the active part of hypochlorite. If we use ultrasonic activation, we can have a higher concentration of chlorine. It means that during the use of ultrasonic devices, we, our hypochlorite will be more effective. Perfect. We understood everything. We understood that we have to fight against bacteria. We understood that anatomy is an our enemy. We understood that also dentin is an our enemy. We understood that apochlorite and DTA are our in, we are two main important irrigants that we have to use in our daily practice. We understood that uh, chlorated syringes are really important and that a polymeric needle like Iriflex is the best way for delivering our irrigants inside the deepest part of the Rucana system. Now we are missing one thing. We are missing the protocol, the cleaning protocol, the clinical cleaning protocol. In order to understand my cleaning protocol, you have to understand and follow me really well. When we are talking about cleaning, we have to consider three main things. Time, volume, and activation. When we start a root canal treatment, we know when we start, but we don't know when we'll feel shaping. It means that shaping is an unpredictable part of our root canal treatment. While during shaping, we introduce a lot of sodium hypochlorite and irrigants in order to do the uh, chemiomechanical shaping. But the anatomy is different, the operator is different. So, and considering that our hypochlorite and our irrigants are completely buffered from the remnants of, of hypochlorite, is absolutely unuseful try to calculate and consider these irrigants as really effective in terms of our cleaning protocol. So they are really useful, but not so useful if we want to try to write down a cleaning protocol. So my suggestion is, don't consider the volume of hypochlorite that you introduced, because the anatomy, you cannot understand how much time you will, shape in, you will employ for shaping your anatomy. You, your anatomy is unpredictable. The operator, every one of us, is different. So we have to start in calculating our irrigant volume only after shaping. In literature, we have only one part of uh, the cleaning uh, protocol that is really well uh, written, and it's the final rinse protocol. But it's the only vast part, two minutes. No. If we can try to move the final rinse, it means the cleaning protocol that now becomes the cleaning protocol after the end of the shaping, finally we'll be able to calculate how much time we have to spend for our cleaning protocols. And so, let's try to understand me and follow me really well. The liquid volume that we have to introduce after shaping, and also here is a suggestion coming from the literature, is around 10 ml. And after we have 2 ml of a DTA. This is the suggested volume for a root canal therapy. Okay, let's try to use this volume only for the cleaning protocol, the cleaning part, it means after shipping. And the speed of extrusion of this volume, we have to consider drop by drop because we want to work in a safe way. So it's about 2 ml per minute. 2 ml per minute is about drop by drop. Okay. We know the volume, we know the speed, maybe we can try to calculate all the situation, also the time. No, just wait, because we have to understand that we have to use activation of our irrigants. And so, after shipping, we start in calculating the, the, the timing, the, uh, the speed of extrusion, and how much we have to activate uh, our irrigants. Around 30, 20 seconds for each canal. Okay. Now we know all. We know that we have to introduce with our polymeric irreflex needle irrigants inside the root canal. We have to rinse for one minute in the deepest part of the root canal over any kind of curvature. And after, we have to activate for 30 seconds. If we repeat this protocol for five times, we have 
the time, complete time, that we have to spend in disinfection for our root canal system in a single root canal system, like central isosol. Instead, in a double, we can spend 12 minutes. Why? Because we need more time for delivering irrigants inside the root canal system, and we need more time of the activation. And the same for the pluri from the molar. If we have, we have to spend 15 minutes in cleaning because we have to extrude more liquid because we need more time, we have to activate in three canals or four, at least for one minute, 20 seconds for each canal. We reproduce, we, re, we repeat this protocol five times. At the end, we do the same with ADTA and remember, the final flush will, will be water or alcohol if you want. If you follow this protocol, believe me, you will never spend so much time for cleaning. And so this is only a suggestion because the only way for writing down in your personal protocol in cleaning is not to calculate the liquid that you use while you're shipping for a really effective as a, as a really effective liquid in order to obtain a good disinfection. So try to write down your personal protocol. Why not? For recap all the situation, my intent is to suggest you a cleaning, a cleaning protocol. Starting from this point, we have to check what the literature can give us. And from the literature, we have a lot of answers in terms of volume, in terms of what is the best kind of activation system. From the new market products, from the technology, we obtained a real good, finally, a good one needle that is Iriflex, the only one made in polymer that can reach the apical part, the apical part of the Rukana system. We understood that EDTA and apical right are really important. Altogether, this situation can finally fight against an enemy that is more powerful than us, bacteria, anatomy, and dentin. Try to write down your protocol. You will be successful if you follow my suggestion. Thank you so much for your attention and see you soon.